purification. The ritual has begun. Are we too late? No. We can still make it. Hmm? Who's there? Me. Huh? Are you ready? Almost. We're all in. Good. Let's figure this out. First, we take care of the stragglers. Mr. Mercury, you distract that acolyte with your fish, so Gale can snatch him from behind. When that one wanders out of sight, I'll take him down. The last one, I leave to you, Mr. Mercury. Aye, aye. Now those three can wield Maiden's fire, so we have to take them down together. Then we grab what we came for and hightail it back to the ship. Let's do it. Wait, wait, wait. What? What about the High Priest? Oh, just give him a hug. <laughs> okay, love that plan. I call upon the maiden's fire. The power of the cursed belongs to the cursed. Yar, hello and welcome. My name is Saiken, and today we're taking a look at Shadow Gambit. The Curse Crew, which is a real-time tactics video game developed by the publisher of Minimi Games. The game was uh, freshly released, comes in PlayStation 5, Xbox and of course for the PC. Since it has just been released, I wanted to answer the question, is it worth it? So let's uh, join me and dive head first into the salty ocean of a cursed tale of a ghost ship. Let's go. Let's start as always with a good old lore in a game. The lore in the world building for me is important as it uh, sets the tone for the entirety of uh, the game. In the case of Shadow Gambit, I would say the lore and the background are incredibly well done. Not only is the uh, world fleshed out, but the game also offers you a couple of small introductory bits and pieces wherever you go. The Iron Bay. Once a charming and haunted atoll, this island was transformed into a blazing furnace by the Inquisition's divine alchemists. As you are going through the game, each of your individual crewmates has a lively background story, the banter between them, the individual dialogues and simply the way that they are interacting feels natural. Someone has taken a lot of time to write the dialogues. Each of the characters feel unique, believable and de deep in terms of what they bring to the table. The main storyline is fully voiced, wherein you can listen to the entirety of a dialogue. There are plenty of options to go into deeper discussions and the game really sets a nice tone. The antagonist is believable and has a purified motive behind it and there is still enough mystery in the world left uh, you wondering why are all of these curses exist in the first place, where is the matching coming from and so on and so forth. So the game really excels at that point and therefore I wanted to give it an exceptional grade. Which nicely brings me to the second point, the graphics and the graphical user interface. So when looking at the game, it is clear uh, that there were a couple of enthusiasts at play. Uh, the game itself comes with a comic -y graphic and cuts a couple of small edges here and there as they are using textures in order to compensate for, well, not very complex uh, polygon uh, shading. However, the movements of the individual characters, the uh, crispiness of how their abilities work, the lack of delay 
the overall fluidity, the high frames per second, and the very nicely animated environment make up for it. So I would give the game overall, from a pure graphic standpoint, potentially even a 7 out of 10. Great game in that regard. It gets a couple of minus points on the graphical user interface for a variety of reasons. Um, although you can, uh, for instance, look through uh, the eyes of each of the enemies and therefore look at their kind of uh, vision uh, cues, uh, the game doesn't always do a fantastic job in highlighting the exact edges of what you can or cannot do. A personal pet peeve of mine on top of it was that the customized controls are really not very um, intuitive, shall we say. It uh, offers you in the options even a classical real-time strategy game, but this game is not a real-time strategy game. It is the closest to kind of a dawn of war, multiple uh, individual characters with special abilities kind of game. And since oftentimes in the game it requires you to work on multiple enemies at the same time with multiple characters at the same time, you're finding yourself uh, a bit frustrated that the selection of uh, your crewmates takes so long. I'll give you an example. Uh, for instance, uh, um, the ability to freeze time, which Aya, your main character, has, has a duration of exactly 5.5 seconds. The kill animation, uh, so the dying duration of her blink strike is 5.0 seconds. So if you start with that and follow up with a killing strike, partially that should, well, I should have, uh, I should have uh, used that and that, partially that should work very well because he will just stop with his time freeze as uh, the killing animation is over and you can then continue with the melee kill. So whilst it works with a single character, it becomes much more difficult once you do have a second character, since uh, the selection of these characters sometimes take a little bit of time. And if you, in this case, use uh, as a second character, uh, someone who can crowd control with one of their skills as well, again, full duration of five uh, seconds, then you're really wondering how should you do all of the skills with three characters at once in order to work through a full uh, crew of multiple enemies. So that might uh, be a player skill issue here and on consoles it might uh, work much much easier but I simply wanted to bind the crew uh, members on the F keys however um, it did not allow me to even unbind the F keys so when you're offering a individual key binding setting and then you cannot even unbind other keys so that when you're selecting a crewmate multiple things happen. That's not really perfect. Other than that, the GUI is fine, but it could be crisper in the layout. And I think it wouldn't have hurt to put uh, proper timers on uh, top of it and also indicate or let's say pre-plan a couple of moves. The game oftentimes just revolves more around can you quickly execute the moves and not so much about your strategy thinking. So having the ability to properly uh, to properly um, pause like this and then start executing the moves would have been better. That however does not always work in combat. Again, might be me, um, but I've played mostly without uh, pause because uh, the game just did not support it that well on PC. All right, moving on to the next topic, which brings us on to the sound effects. Shadow Gambit the Curse Crew excels at this point. The music is absolutely on point. It is clear to hear that they have hired a composer that is that was just really good at hitting the theme of pirate music. You almost feel like you're in the Pirates of the Caribbean, but in a more cursed and comic-y way. The sound effects of each of the abilities are on point, crisp and very fast. Uh, the um, interactions of all of the characters, let it be banter, let it be the fully voiced uh, campaign interaction, the main storyline, or just the interaction of two random NPCs that, yeah, discuss worldly matters. 
The sounds and the effects add a lot to the depth of the game. Everybody is a little bit quirky and doesn't take life too serious. I suppose that is what happens when you have been under it for a while, but they are doing it in a believable and relatable fashion and this is potentially one of the biggest str uh, strengths of Shadow Gambit. Let's talk a little bit about the tactical gameplay in Once Shadow more. Gambit. I have a mixed back on the tactical yes. gameplay. Uh, there are parts of it which are working incredibly well, such as the crispiness of uh, the abilities, the simple idea of having a pause here and there, and just the core concept of these memories where you can reload the game whenever it is needed. However, some of the things on, uh, things on the other side did just not sit very much well with me. One of uh, them, for instance, is the abysmal level of AI. In uh, the game, whenever someone dies, for instance, these guys will just stroll around, and by stroll around I mean just really randomly looking left and right, and once they're done with it, kind of after 30 seconds they will go back to their positions. That on the one hand side is understandable in order to push the mission forward, however it makes for a couple of really lame tactics that are possible. The other criticism that I would have is that although on paper many of the plans work well, sometimes just the abilities do not have the right level of range and then they aren't functioning fully, which leads you to nonetheless needing to play uh, things thri uh, twice or thrice. Once you have gotten the hang of it and know where to hide and how to quote unquote abuse uh, the AI, things are becoming incredibly easy with the game, even on the hardest difficulties. So, Tactical gameplay, generally well intended, but the implementation not always completely on point. Alright, let's talk about uh, the last category, which is replayability of uh, the game. I landed on an average, I am a bit torn in between a couple of things. So naturally, uh, Shadow Gambit suffers from the type of game that it is. Static puzzle solver, uh, solvers uh, will oftentimes just end up being repetitive because you know how to solve a certain level, you know how to use a certain amount of skills and thus you will uh, very likely do it in a same or similar fashion once you are playing through it again. Since it is also a story driven game I cannot yet disclose or spoil how the ending works but despite smaller adjustments there isn't a lot of depth in the storyline in terms of replayability such as for instance you would have with phoenix point where you have multiple factions multiple endings and so on uh, even worse uh, for the ca uh, for this category of game um, there's a bit of a saturation after a while. Yes, at the beginning it's absolutely fun to tear through a lot of Inquisitors with your swords and bullets and just kill them, but over time it becomes a bit dull as the core game mechanic is basically just tricking and overcoming three to four enemies at the same time with a couple of skills that you're using. It is satisfactory though, so I shouldn't be too harsh on it. So what I'm saying is the replayability suffers more from the genre and from the type of game that Shadow Gambit is, uh, more so than it itself not being fun to play. Specifically with an overall uh, seven different additional characters between uh, besides Aya, there are uh, quite a few different and varying playstyles that you could uh, use in order to approach the game and I suppose they also did that in order to kind of garner for a replayability just so that you use different characters to go through the same storyline in a different manner. I can understand it so they did whatever they could in order to lessen the impact of what I would assume is a known difficulty in the game to begin with. Uh, but overall it just does not uh, raise higher than a average. So where does that bring us with Shadow Gambit? Is it worth your time and money?
So where does that leave us with Shadow Gambit, the Curse Crew? So the game itself excels definitely in the lore and background department. I fully appreciate uh, the in-depth characters, the banter, the world building, the little intro videos. All of that is incredibly helpful. I, however, would uh, say that the game uh, could have done even more on the graphical user interface. The graphics themselves are fine. They might not be the best graphics, and if you're into cartoony uh, graphic style, you won't mind anyways. But the GUI isn't always completely on spot. Doesn't mean it's bad, but the game suffers from the multi-platform port, where they need to work on different platforms from the get-go. So, a known disadvantage. The sound and the FX is fantastic. The composing in this game is absolutely spot on and each of the sounds just make it a very believable and a realistic experience to go through. The tactical gameplay is good, although not excellent. I would say it has its weaknesses mainly in the balancing and also in the shall we say, one-dimensionality of certain problem solving. Oftentimes there is a right way and then there are many, many wrong uh, ways uh, where you need to find that one really correct way of solving a puzzle. Which brings me to the uh, replayability. The game tried its very best to offer a really good replayability for what it could do. Uh, the game genre makes it difficult to enjoy it more than, let's say, two times once you have played through it uh, with different characters. The static environment and the static positioning of the characters just make it hard. However, the game offers multiple ways of approaching it by simply selecting different characters on each playthrough. That alone will not uh, win it any yeah, particular trophies in this category, but it is okay. So overall, I would give the game a good to very good uh, rating, 6.5 out of 10. Uh, the game certainly has its high points, specifically if you're enjoying a pirate story with a little bit of a cursed theme to it, if you enjoy good party banter, a couple of jokes, if you are not opposed to cartoony and a little bit over the top kind of interaction, then all of that is certainly what Shadow Gambit brings to the table. If you are more of a serious toned gamer, if you would appreciate more tactical gameplay instead of puzzle solving, then I would say stay away from the game as you might be disappointed. Overall, I personally will give it a, a shot more and if uh, the viewers want to see more of it on the channel, feel free to ask me for that. I am more than willing to do a playthrough, which typically is an indication for a quality of a game. So, do you agree with my assessment? What's your thought on Shadow Gambit? And if I nailed it with the review, thanks a lot and see you in the next review. Bye bye.